In this video, you're going to learn how to graph parabolas in the intercept form. So the intercept form is like a factored form. See this y equals a times the quantity x minus p times the quantity x minus q. And by setting these factors, these groups equal to zero, you can find the x-intercepts where it crosses the x-axis. That's going to be at p comma zero and q comma zero. And then if a is positive, that means the parabola is going to be opening up. If A is negative, that means it's going to be opening down. And then to find the axis of symmetry, which is the line that uh, divides the parabola in half, or if you fold over that line, it matches to itself, what you do is you average the two x-intercepts, meaning you add them up and you divide by two. So I'll show you how this works. We're going to go through three examples. Let's start with this first example. So here what I would do is I would set this equal to zero and set this equal to zero. If I do that, x minus one equals zero, add one to both sides, you can see that x is gonna equal one and x is gonna equal three. Okay, so now what we can do is we can add one and three together and divide by two and that comes out to two. So what that means is that x equals two, that's our axis of symmetry. You can see it's halfway between those two x-intercepts. To find where the vertex is now, you're gonna take that two, that x coordinate, which lies on the axis of symmetry, and you're gonna plug it back in for x. So let's do that. So if we plug in two, we get two minus one is one, two minus three is negative one, and then times that two, so that comes out to negative two. So now our vertex is gonna be right here at two negative two, and you've got a pretty good sketch of your graph. Now if you want more points, we could do, say, for example, zero, which gives us the y-intercept. That would be, let's see, uh, zero, time, zero minus one is negative one times two, and zero minus three is negative three, so that's coming out to six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And we can do the mirror image over the line of symmetry. So now you can see our graph looks something like this. What the two does is it's stretching the graph, since it's bigger than one, that's a vertical stretch. Uh, your teacher might ask you, what's the domain? That's all real numbers because the graph goes to the left and the right forever and ever. The range is going to be greater than or equal to negative 2. So we could say range y is greater than or equal to negative 2. Uh, this graph has a minimum. That's like a low point, and That would be at negative 2. Uh, where is the graph increasing? It's increasing, meaning going up to the right when x is greater than 2 and it's decreasing when you're to the left of two or less than two, it's going down. And that's pretty much it for that one. So let's take a look at number two now. So this one, where are the x-intercepts on number two? Well, again, if we set these factors, these groups equal to zero, this, you can make a little mini equation, x minus two equals zero, so x equals two. x plus two equals zero, subtract two, x equals negative two, those are our two x-intercepts. Now you can sometimes count to the middle to find that axis of symmetry, or you can do this average where you add them together and divide by two. So that comes out to zero over two, which is zero, which means the axis of symmetry is gonna be right here on the y-axis. So if we take that zero and plug it back in for x here, we can get the y-coordinate of our vertex. So zero minus two is negative two, zero plus two is two, and times negative three, so that comes out to six times two, which is 12. So our y-coordinate of our vertex is gonna be at 12. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, right here. And now I have a pretty good sketch of our graph. We know it's opening down because the a is negative. It's kind of narrow because you can see the three is like stretching it. It's a vertical stretch by a factor of three. And you've got a pretty good sketch. You can plot some more points if you want. Uh, but that's a pretty good sketch. Now the domain we said is going to be all real numbers because it goes to the left and the right forever and ever. The range is going to be y is less than or equal to 12. Uh, where is it increasing? Well, it's going up to the right here uh, where x is less than 0. Not equal to 0 because that starts to kind of change direction at that point. And then it's decreasing, meaning going down to the right when x is to the right of 0 or greater than 0. Uh, this graph has a maximum, like a high point, and that high point or maximum would be 12. And you got it. So let's take a look at one last example. Okay, see if you can pause the video and try this last example on your own, and we'll go through it together. So y equals one-third times the quantity x plus 1 times the quantity x plus 5. Now, if I was going to do this problem, 
I would set both of these factors equal to zero. So I, you can go off to the side, make a little mini equation, x plus one equals zero, x plus five equals zero. If we subtract one from both sides, x equals negative one is one of our x-intercepts, and if we subtract five, uh, x is equal to negative five is our other x-intercept, two, three, four, five right here. Now to find that axis of symmetry, we can either try to count towards the middle here, or use this midpoint formula, which is like an average. So you're adding the two x-coordinates and dividing by two. So that's a negative six divided by two is negative three, which is right here. x equals negative three. Remember, x equals lines are vertical lines. And then by taking that negative three and putting it back in for x, we can find the y-coordinate of the vertex. Remember, the vertex always lies on the axis of symmetry. So let's go ahead and do that. So negative three plus one, negative three plus five times one-third. So that comes out to negative two. This comes out to positive two. Okay, so we get negative four times one-third is negative four-thirds, or you could say negative one and one-third. So let's see, so that's our vertex, negative three, negative one, and one-third. So just a little bit below negative one. And you can see we have a pretty good sketch of our graph. It's gonna look something like this, okay? And if you wanna find the y-intercept, you could put zero in for x. Here, let's do that, that would be a one, times five is five, so five-thirds, which is like one and two-thirds, so we cross right about, right about there. And you got a good graph. Now, if you want to find out, does this have a maximum or a minimum? Well, we know that A is positive, it opens up, so that gives us a minimum value, and that was at negative four-thirds. The domain is all real numbers, because the graph goes to the right and the left forever and ever. The range is gonna be Y is greater than or equal to negative four-thirds. And where is it uh, increasing or decreasing? It's increasing when you're to the right of negative three. So when x is greater than negative three, it's decreasing when you're to the left. See how it's going down to the right, less than negative three. Uh, and we said the minimum was at negative four-thirds. We got our range, which is y is greater than negative four-thirds. Got a pretty good sketch. So Great job if you were able to follow these three examples. If you want to learn more about graphing parabolas, not just in the intercept form, but in the vertex form, the standard form, et cetera, follow me over to the video that I did previously talking about how to graph it in all the different forms, and we'll get some more practice in that video. I'll see you over there.